former U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, John Herbst, who joins the conversation uh, right now. Welcome, Ambassador. We saw the video of Putin earlier, and like I said, seeing the video of Evan and Paul and uh, landing in the United States, that'll be something to watch tonight. But what, why don't you pick up on the point that Joe was making that Jake Sullivan had to answer for, that these things aren't easy and you got to give up uh, a bad guy, in this case, in, in one of the people that gave us a hitman uh, to get back the good guys. There's no question that that's how this works. Uh, for Putin, getting back his operatives who do dreadful things in the West, whether it's selling technology, uh, weapons to other countries, whether it's murdering people, he takes American innocents as hostages, and then he demands a trade. And it's not surprising that this trade deal, which again is bringing 16 people out of Russian and Belarusian prisons and sending eight Russian bad apples home, um, is not so easy to swallow. But the deal became possible, frankly, when Lukashenko arrested a German national, Krieger, last fall. Because Putin was insisting for the release of Whalen and then Gershkovich, yep. the release in Germany of the Russian operative who murdered a Chechen figure, um, Kosikov, uh, the, the Kremlin operative. And the Germans said no. But then when Belarus takes a German as a hostage, that gives Schultz, the chancellor of Germany, reasons to do just what the Biden administration is doing. All right. But this is a dilemma that we face. That's really interesting. On the tablet, we have um, uh, Krashikov. Okay, so this is the, this is the assassin that the ambassador Correct. is alluding to. So you can bring that up. Uh, Vadim Krashikov, jailed in Germany. The guy was charged with murdering a Chechen fighter in 2019, and they said they acted on the Russian orders. Previously, he killed somebody in Moscow, but they, uh, they have dropped the case years ago, more than a decade ago. Now, explain again for people who haven't followed all this back and forth, like something out of a spy movie, what happened in Germany to make them play ball with this? Because earlier they were saying, you know, maybe the vice president had something to do with it, getting in the room with Schultz uh, in, uh, at a conference in Munich, but, but you think it was something different. Well, I, I don't rule out um, some praise for Biden and for Harris and, for, and Biden and Bl excuse me, Blinken and, yep. and Sullivan's foreign policy team. But... You know, remember, we traded uh, Victor Booth, the great arms yeah. merchant who sowed death and destruction in much of the global South, for Brittany Griner. And Biden tried very hard then to include Paul Whelan in that deal, which took place in, I think, December of 22, and failed. So we make that deal. We still want to get Whelan out. Um, and as we tried to get Whelan out, and then when Gershkovich was taken to get Gershkovich out too, the Russians kept bringing up Krasikov. Um, and Germany said no, 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 no. And that's that those no's began, I don't know, in early 2023. Mm -hmm. And only after a German citizen was arrested, uh, Krieger, in Belarus last October, did the negotiations begin, which led to this deal. So suddenly you might say Germany had that same unfortunate skin in the game, meaning an innocent Germans arrested as opposed to, in our case, innocent Americans direct, er, arrested. So it took some diplomatic skill by the Biden administration to pull this off. But the key factor was Germany, which was adamant about not releasing Krasikov, Putin's main objective in all of this right. suddenly changed its mind. All and right. it was not because of brilliant argumentation from other Westerners, but because of the whole, the cold reality that a German was now facing possibly a death sentence in Belarus. And they were willing to deal, uh, and they were key to getting yes. this deal done. Um, but I mean, you know from your years in international diplomacy that that's, um, the incentives is really what drives us, I guess, and people's personal incentives yes. of the countries involved. And there were a lot of countries, and they did go big with this, uh, which was interesting too, right, Ambassador? This was not, right, you mentioned well, they, Griner, it wasn't a one-for-one one like that. It was a big, it was a big no, deal. The, the Russians have been pushing hard for their, again, you know, bad apple operators in Poland. Right. Uh, I've known that for many months. Um, I learned today about the Russian interest in their bad operators in Norway and Slovenia, but it's the same principle. But you know, it's interesting. Um, 16 people have been returned from Russia and Belarus, and eight are going back to Russia. And this points to something else which we perhaps can play on in the future. Right. When Putin, Putin will have an E-Day fix that a specific guy is really important to him. Victor Boot was one of them, which is why perhaps we could have done better in the Brittany Griner deal. But I think the administration had felt so much pressure to get her out, they ultimately just conceded a one-for-one one in that situation. They had the same, Putin had the same sense about Krasikov now. 
So he was willing to give up people like Yashin, the Russian dissident, and um, Karamurza, the Russian dissident, um, to make this deal happen. And this is a reminder of a deal that Putin made in the fall of 2022 with Ukraine, when he returned 205, 215 Ukrainian POWs in order to get his Ukrainian pal Medvedchuk out of the Ukrainian pokey. Right. So if we have... Thanks so much for watching. Just go to joinnn.com to find News Nation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.